coming up on today's show. And there's just all kinds of people that just can't seem to ever get there when they need to be. So how do I get thinking about that margin? I like to encourage people to work within your natural cycles. Being on time, how to break your habit of always being late today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today we are going to talk about a subject that's near and dear to my heart. Our producer, Leanne, kind of uh, said, you know, we should do this because this would help you. And it's, how do you overcome the problem of always being late? Uh, And, you know, we're not talking, you know, half hour late. It might be 15 minutes, might be two minutes, but uh, rarely on time. So we are going to bring on one of our favorite people who's here just in time, Gerilyn Thomas, Metropolitan Organizing. Gerilyn, how are you doing today? Doing great, John. Thanks for having me back. It's always a good time. Well, good. I I, I hope you're here. You know, this is like going to be a little one-on-one coaching, but I think a lot of people, um, ru- do you run into people that have this issue of just always being a little late? I work with these people and I have friends with these this uh chronic lateness issue and I have relatives and there's just all kinds of people that just can't seem to ever get there when they need to be. Yeah. And you or know, I, have- I, I think part of it is not like, you know, I, I think about going to church on Sunday. I mean, I get up really early. I mean, I have several hours to get ready, but we are always like walking in like two or three minutes, you know, during the first song and because it drives everybody crazy. So I'd like to deconstruct some of that uh, on this uh, on this episode today and talk about, you know, what's behind all this anyway? What's the what's the baseline, uh, uh, you know, facts behind someone who 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 acts like this? Well, let's let's start with a few. Let's use your church example, because that's as good as any that we're going to get. Right. It's a real life uh, example. Yep. So the first thing I want to know is. How realistic are you when you estimate how long things will take? So you know that you get up hours early. What are you doing? What do you spend your day doing? Drinking coffee, reading the news, putzing around your house, walking your dog. I mean, what are you doing exactly? Think about those tasks, then estimate how long those things take you realistically. And a lot of people with something like, you know, going to church or a play or whatever, is they underestimate the amount of time that finding a parking space will take or what they're going to find to wear, you know, pick out what they're going to wear. So that's where I start the process. Let's see if you have a realistic expectation of how long things actually take you. You know, and I think in my situation, too, I'm I'm thinking more about um, how much time do I have? So it's it's that's that question, but in a little bit different way. It's like, how much time left do I have before I have to leave? you know, okay. and, and wanting to be there. And I think, cause you know, I do all those different things, but so how do I get thinking about that margin? Okay. So the first one is, um, you know, I love to think of David Allen when we're talking about things like this, cause he's the big time management guru, one of them, but he um, is the first person I ever heard say this. And I remember it stuck with me is you can do anything, but you can't do everything. Hmm. So the first one is be very intentional about what your goal is. And if your goal is to, um, you know that it takes you 35 minutes to dress and shower, and you know it takes another 20 minutes to cook something and eat that something and then put your dishes in the dishwasher or whatever your routine is. And then on average, it takes you about 10 minutes to drive around the parking lot so you find a spot. You have to add all those things in and then work backwards from the time that you're leaving. So people who are late for flights, you know, we tell them this all the time, give yourself extra time. Then the other thing, John, is I would say, be a lot more intentional. So for somebody like you, if you were my client, I would say, okay, Sunday morning, um, if your goal is to be to church at 11 a.m. or 9 a.m. or whatever your time is, You are going to uh, make a commitment to yourself that you will not get online at all Sunday morning. Nothing, your goal is to be up and dressed and set a timer on your phone or whatever is appropriate for you to make sure that you are in your car. And that means, you know, your windows are defrosted or your car is filled with gas because there are all these other things that people don't prepare for. So you have to be very intentional about what your goal is. Well, you know, what's interesting is, you know, my if my wife were sitting here, uh, 
helping Someday, help, yeah helping pile on to this situation uh, right. she would say well you don't really you don't really care about getting to church on time because um, you, you say you have a, a, a workout class or you go to a doctor's appointment you get there on time because you know right. there's a specific but why you know so um, I don't know if if getting there on time is a high enough high enough priority for you but uh, you know, then the other thing is I will start blaming the kids. Well, it's like, I was ready to go, but, you know, such and such kid didn't have their, you know, boots on or jacket on or whatever it was. So, um, and, you know, and cause I, I do think about, the, that's a show for another time. I think that's like passive aggressive, right? When yeah. we, it's always somebody else's fault, never ours. We call it the blame game in our house. Yes. And, uh, I'm a very good player at that, you know, so, uh, okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll accept responsibility for this. Right. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Okay, so another thing is to, um, I like to encourage people to work within your natural cycle. So let's move off the church thing and let's go with somebody okay. else who has priorities. But um, are you a morning person or an evening person? Meaning, do you like to get, and then uh, along with your natural cycles, think about, you know, that old big rocks, small pebbles. Yep. So I talk about this in my decluttering book. If you're the kind of person that has your things on a list, and then at the end of the day, you look at the list and think, well, rats, I didn't get anything done. You know, I, I didn't accomplish anything. What did I do all day? And then people can tell me specific things, but none of them are on the list. So they're kind of avoiding the stuff on their list, right? Which yeah. sounds a little bit like your church story. Um, so are you, do you want to check the big, um, most uh, onerous tasks? off your list first or do you like to do all the really simple things and save save the more complex for later and again try to marry whichever camp of big rocks or small pebbles first into your natural cycle so a morning person who likes to accomplish their big stuff first the hardest stuff first i would say you know make sure that you time this appropriately so mm -hmm. don't hop online don't um, think I'm going to exercise for 15 minutes. Don't start reading email. Don't do anything until you're up, showered, and ready to tackle that first task. And then you check it off your list. Right. And again, if you're a night person, do it that way. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, when you get down to this point of knowing how much time it takes, then shouldn't you add just like a little bit of buffer? I mean, what happens if you hit the light or there's a train on the on the, the crossing or, or whatever it is, uh, you know, because I can tell you, you know, it might take 20 minutes to get there. But is, is there a certain amount of uh, buffer or uh, extra margin, I guess, whatever that you, you should add? This is always, always my priority when I work with somebody about time management. And that is building what I call white space into your calendar. So anybody who's done advertising or marketing knows that if you really want to catch somebody's attention, don't fill a page like in a newspaper or a magazine with a lot of text. Instead, do something where there's lots of white space. Think of your calendar in the same way too. So if you have a doctor's appointment at you know 1.30 in the afternoon, again, you're going to back up your time. Okay, I'm going to eat lunch. I'm going to hop in my car. And my goal is always to get someplace a few minutes early. Mm -hmm. And then I can sit in the parking lot, check my email, return calls, file my nails, whatever I want to do out there, right? So always try to expect the unexpected. And of course, right now we're talking about small individual type appointments on our calendar, but it's even more important for people um, Take a college student, for example, with that final exam or a paper due. Lots of things will come up. You could get sick, you could lose your keys, you could, there's a lot of crazy little things that go wrong. And I call them time vampires. You know, they suck the time out of the day. And then before you know it, you're like, oh my gosh, I've got a 10 page paper due tomorrow and I haven't started a thing. Right. Well, you know, we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about habits because some of this, I think, is habit forming and or bad habits. And and I know that's probably a whole nother podcast, too. But we'll, we'll pick up on this when we come back. We're talking about how to break that habit of being habitually late with uh, Gerilyn Thomas. And we'll be right back. Keep it all together. That's why you like to be organized and in control. Introducing MyOrganize.life, a special place where you can get ideas and solutions to organize what's important to you, your important papers, your important decisions, your important life events. We show you the ideas and products to stay organized in your life. See what's new. 
stop by and say hello. Visit us at any time at www.myorganize.life. It's just for you. MyOrganize.life by Smead. Find us at www.myorganize.life. MyOrganize.life. We're back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about how to get on time or how to not be late and how to break that habit of people like myself who do it regularly. We're with Geraldine Thomas, Metropolitan Organizing. And Geraldine, uh, before the break, we talked a little bit about habits, uh, or at least set that up, because how much do habits have to play into this whole equation? Well, habits are a huge part, because what you're doing when you try to break a habit, when you attempt to break your habit, is you are being very mindful and very intentional um, about a long-term goal. So somebody who wants to um, I'll use something that's very current right now, and I just did it myself for January. There's a program called Whole30, and it's where you kind of eliminate all of these things from your um, food intake. So there's no dairy, no sugar, which means no wine. Um, mm. Leanne, are you listening? Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> um, and you are very, very intentional about what you're eating. It it makes you hyper aware of how much time it takes to prepare healthy food with all of these, um, again, very limited ingredients. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a lot of preparation and there's a lot of thought that goes into that. It's the same with getting out the door on time or um, whatever, you know, your habit is. I like to link habits. Um, And for some people, this kind of uh, blurs the line with, multitasking. So again, you have to really know yourself. But for me, um, let's say that you link uh, brushing your teeth with putting the toothbrush back in the same space, and then doing something taking your vitamins, you know, so Mm. that could be a morning or an evening routine, you are going to for 30 days, be super intentional about brushing your teeth, putting your toothbrush back and taking your vitamins then you might link something else to that. It's the same with getting somewhere on time. I'm going to be very, very mindful. And I like to tell people, set a date. So for this whole 30, the reason it's called 30, of course, is because it lasts for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And the author of that book, Melissa Hartwig, has a great quote. She's like, fighting cancer is hard. Uh, Losing your job is hard. But being mindful about your eating for only 30 days is not that hard. Right. So really separate in your mind what's difficult and what's not. Oh, and what about like how many days or I mean, there's statistics out there. How often do you have to do something before it becomes a new habit or you break the old one? Honestly, John, I don't believe any of those okay. things. I think everyone is so individual that... Um, it just depends. And also what else is going on in your life? There are people with um, chronic illnesses. They have to be a little gentler on themselves because maybe they aren't um, going to have 30 days of feeling great or 21 days of feeling great. So, you know, you have to give yourself a little time. Anybody except you, John, we're giving some room for excuses. <laughs> okay. I know I'm, I'm not going to blame anyone. I'm not going to make any excuses. Right. So um, let's talk about some maybe uh, little hacks either in your calendar or how you maybe uh, write something down or record a, uh, an appointment or a time uh, that might help you be more on time for that. Okay. So um, I'm going to I'm going to back that up just a minute because okay. I think there's a, a really critical step. So when I'm working with someone, let's say it's a home office and they're telling me, oh, my gosh, I have to get my taxes ready. I have to do this. I have to do that. So, OK, what's the priority? What's the worst thing that will happen on this list if it isn't accomplished either today mm-hmm. or in seven days or whatever the deadline is? And then I always tell people, along with this linking of habits, I think it's really great, and I found my clients have huge success with this, is to find what motivates you. So for some people, you know, set yourself up for success. It might be smelling something refreshing. So Mm. make sure that if you're jazzed up by citrusy smells, make that smell available. Um, Shower or um, lower your temperature in your office. It's pretty well known that the more warm you are, the more comfortable and less motivated you are. So Mm. you'll notice like if you've ever been to Vegas um, for um, any reason, (laughs) fun or conferences, 
any those, reasonable reason <laughs> any reasonable reason right yeah. um those um hotels are really kept chilly mm. that's not by accident you know that's to keep you going and stimulated they don't want you feeling warm and sluggish and like mm. it's harder to get your wallet out right when you're like oh i need one more cocktail and i'm gonna really relax right. no they want you cold so lower your office temperature um, for some people, I'll tell them, okay, let's after lunch, because that's another sluggish time of the day where people say, oh, what the heck, I'll just do that tomorrow. Um, go brush your teeth, or if you're at home, go take a shower or something. Just get yourself psyched. Don't sit. John, I wouldn't let you sit Sunday morning. I'd just make sure you're standing up and always ready to go, right? Of course, you could probably find 80 things to do standing up. Oh, yeah. Well, and that, I, you know, I'm not going to blame or come up with excuses, but when you have a long to-do list of things to do and you want to just get one of those done before you leave, because then you feel like, oh, I'm going to get one more thing done. But um, that, again, I think is a uh, topic for another podcast. Uh, say, Gerilyn, you know, we're going to, we're going to wrap this up here. I, I know we have so much more to cover, but uh, I want to honor your time and, and our listeners' times and, and viewers' time. So can you come back and, and we can finish this up our, on our next episode? It would be a pleasure. Thanks. Okay. Before we go, just give us a quick uh, little plug for Metropolitan Organizing and the kinds of uh, work you do and the kinds of clients you work with. Okay. Uh, MetropolitanOrganizing.com, located in the Raleigh metro area, Cary, North Carolina. And I work with, um, I coach new organizers and I train them. I teach some NAPO classes mm -hmm. and I work with residential um, people who need help with time management, with organizing their homes, with organizing their calendars, with organizing their life. Well, that is great. And so uh, what we're going to do is next time we're going to come back, we're going to do part two of being on time and we'll be on time for that. Uh, in our next episode. And Gerilyn, uh, look forward to finishing this conversation so I can be developing some new habits. So folks, we'll see you next time on Keeping You Organized. <laughs>